Hello student. Today, to, uh, today is a uh, we are going to understand the chapter one, electric charges and field. And one of the topic of chapter one is application of Gauss's law, and in which we are going to understand the electric field due to infinitely long straight uniformly charged wire. You have to understand the wire is infinitely long, and it is also straight uniformly charged. Means charge on the wire is constant. Uniformly charged means charge per unit length on the wire is constant. That is very important part of this uh, theory. So here we are uh, considering that uh, consider the infinitely long wire which is having the linear charge density lambda. The linear charge density of the wire is lambda. It is very important. The lambda is constant throughout the wire. Lambda is nothing but the charge per unit length. Unit length is having how much charge? That is lambda, and that lambda is constant. Now we we want to find out uh, electric field at P point, which is at perpendicular distance R from the wire. You can see in a figure here. In this figure, you can see this is a wire, which is having the lambda charge density, and we want to find out the electric field at P point. An electric field at P point, which is perpendicularly. This is a wire. and the point p is a perpendicular where you want to find out the electric field the p point is at r distance from the wire so here what we want uh, we want some kind of symmetry of the electric field so we will take p point which is at r distance as similar we will consider q point the q point is also at r distance the q point is also at r distance or you can imagine the other point r So R is also at R distance. So here, if you take a wire like this, and if you consider the points around that wire, at every point the electric field will be what? At every point the point P, Q, and R, the distance of the P, Q, and R is what? Small r, small r, and small r. Distance is what? Constant. You can imagine the P point is at R distance, the Q point is at R distance. the r point is also at r distance all these point at r distance if all these point at r distance then you can image you can consider the electric field point electric field at p point electric field at q point and electric field at r point is also constant and that's how we get one kind of symmetry if you take a wire like this and if you consider r distance that at r distance everywhere from the wire the distance is constant and if distance is constant then the nothing but the electric field will be what constant so we are getting one kind of cylindrical surface and thereby we develop the concept of cylindrical sur uh, surface so here we are going to consider the gaussian cylindrical surface of radius r and the length l whose axis coinciding with the wire so we have considered just imagine this is a wire this is a wire and you have to imagine a cylinder you have to imagine a cylinder around the wire student there is no cylinder is there there is no cylinder but you have to imagine that there is one imaginary cylinder around the wire and that imaginary cylinder is known as our gaussian cylindrical surface now charge enclosed by the cylinder from this point to this point how much charge is enclosed by the cylinder and that charge is we are considering as a q the total charge enclosed by the cylinder is q okay now here we want to find out the flux linked to cylindrical surface and we know the formula of flux that surface that flux we are saying as a phi 1 and phi 1 is equal to e dot da integration integration of e dot da electric field into area element now you can see this is a cylindrical surface this is a cylindrical surface and you can see the electric field of the wire the electric field of the wire is radially outward you can draw anywhere this is electric field the electric field is radially outward every everywhere on the cylindrical surface and you can see here i have considered the element and the area vector of that element is going upward and similar the electric field is also going upward so what is the angle between electric field and the area element 
the electric field and the ang uh, electric the angle between electric field and the area element we can uh, you can understand it is angle zero because they are in the same direction if they are in the same direction the angle will be zero so we can write e dot da so we can write e da cos zero the angle e between electric field and area element is zero so it will be e da cos zero and we know the cos zero is one so it will be e da now the at all point on the cylindrical point means at all point on cylinder the electric field will be same that we have explained so electric field is constant at all point on the cylindrical surface so it will be outside of the integration and there will be the integration of da the integration of da will give the total cylindrical area the total cylindrical area is given by 2 pi rl so this will be e into 2 pi rl the integration of da will be nothing but the 2 pi rl that is the total surface area of the cylinder the total surface area of the cylinder is given by the 2 pi rl now the flux link to the two end surfaces flux link to the these two end surfaces you can see here the electric field is going upward and the, the area element is in going in a, this direction normal to the surface now you can see the angle between electric field and the area element is how much the, elect, the angle between electric field and area element is nothing but the 90 degree here also you can see for this surface is also 90 degree so you can write it in the same way e vector dot da then it will be e da cos 90 and cos 90 is what cos 90 is 0 so it will be 0 so phi 2 will be equal to 0 so now we get the total flux the total flux is given by phi is equal to phi 1 plus phi 2 uh, phi 2 is 0 phi 1 is e into 2 pi rl that is a total flux now according to gauss law according to gauss law the total flux linked to any closed surface is equal to q by epsilon naught so here the phi is equal to e into 2 pi rl that is equal to q divided by epsilon naught q is a charge enclosed by the cylinder now here we can see the lambda is equal to charge upon length the charge enclosed by the cylinder is q and the length is l so we can write the q is equal to lambda l so here we can write q is equal to lambda l divided by epsilon naught l will be cancelled out so electric field will be given by lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught r now we can write this thing e vector in vector form electric field vector lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught r into n cap where n cap is a unit vector in the direction of electric field now this is the electric field which is produced by the infinitely long straight and uniformly charged wire and that is the formula we are we always uh, we are taking to find out the electric field